Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2018 Chevrolet Spark, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Roadmaster automatic battery disconnect switch. So whenever you're ready to flat tow, whether it be, you know, hooking up to your motorhome or disconnecting it, um, you know, there's quite a few steps and things you have to really pay attention to. And anything you can do to simplify that process uh, is well worth it. And that includes the automatic battery disconnect switch. Now, these sparks require you to disconnect the battery whenever you uh, want to flat tow it. So that would require you to pop the hood, get out some tools, undo the battery, hope that the wires don't move and, and end up touching the battery as you're going down the road again and, and things like that. Not to mention, whenever you get to where you're going and you want to, you know, take your spark out for a cruise, you're going to have to do that process in reverse and hook everything back up. Don't sound too bad, but, you know, chances are good. You do that five, six, seven times, you're going to get tired of it. Well, you can prevent that by using the switch. All right, so as opposed to doing all that, all you're going to have to do is push a button right here. So I'll show you how it works. We'll turn our key on. And, you know, you can see our dash lighting up. Turn signals are working. Screen's going. I'll beep the horn. You know, everything works like it should. Whenever you're ready to flat toe, you push the button, it'll click and everything will turn off. You know, we have no lights going on the screen, can't start the car, horn don't work, uh, and that kills everything the way it needs to be. Whenever you're done flat towing, simply just push that button again, everything will come on like it should. You're ready to start it up and hit the road. So at the end of the day, an upgrade, I definitely recommend. It's just one of those things that really helps streamline and simplify your flat towing process. Now, as far as the installation goes uh, on this particular vehicle, it's actually pretty easy. Um, more or less is bolt up your solenoid. And I will say probably the most time consuming part is having to run a wire, you know, into the uh, interior of our vehicle where we have our switch mounted. But it's really not that bad to be honest with you. Speaking of the installation though, why don't we pull into the garage and do it together now. To begin our installation, uh, we first need to mount up our solenoid. All right, and so we're gonna do that here in the engine compartment. So I got the hood popped. And to make things a little easier to see, I did remove the plastic cover that goes over our valve cover. You don't have to, but the way I did this is I mounted our solenoid right here. And it turns out that there is this factory bracket that just kind of was there attached to the firewall. And so I utilize that by simply taking the bracket that's connected to our solenoid, lining the holes up, and then just taking a nut and bolt and connecting them together. And it turns out it's nice and solid and not gonna go anywhere. And while we're right here, you may as well attach the ground wire, which will be this white wire. What you're gonna do is attach the included ring terminal and you use the provided self-tapping screw. I just ran this through the sheet metal on our firewall and that'll provide us with an adequate ground. Now what we can do is hook up our large cable lens. So this is pretty straightforward. What you're gonna do is remove your battery terminal, all right, and then you can pull this nut off. And these two were originally attached together, okay? So when you pull that nut off, these two split apart. When you have these split apart, you're going to take the cable that says battery post and put it over that stud there, put the nut back down. Then you're able to, you know, put that back over your battery and tighten it down. The other side that says battery cable, that's simply just going to bolt right to the area that was originally going over the terminal. So there's already a hole in it and everything. All you're gonna need to do is take a, uh, take the included bolt, star washers and nut, and bolt the two together. Now moving back to the solenoid, we're gonna have a gray wire that comes off of it that we need to run inside to a switch. So we need to get that uh, into the interior of our vehicle. So what I did is just routed it down along through here and it actually goes through the firewall. I did have to use a drill bit to create an opening 
end of the firewall to run the wire through. Um, it's a little tricky to see out here, but relatively easy to see on the inside. So let's go ahead, move inside and check it out. So if we look on the passenger side, uh, kind of underneath our glove box, this is where that opening was created. And then, like I said, I just used a drill bit to open that up. When you do it, be really careful, make sure there's nothing of importance behind there. And then we just routed our wiring over to the driver's side. So kind of just loosely uh, ran it behind our center console there. Now keep in mind, I have several other wires with it uh, because those are for our braking system. Not really a big deal. You still route it the same way where it comes through that center console and over here on the driver's side. So on the driver's side, here's where our gray wire uh, comes through. And then what I did is I actually just remove this little uh, fuse panel cover here, just pops right out and brought our wire up through there. And I did that because I think it's gonna be a good spot to mount up our switch here on that fuse panel because it's uh, out of the way, we have a ton of room. And if you ever wanna get rid of it, you know, we're just gonna have to grab a new panel. We're not gonna have to worry about, you know, our dash or anything else having some holes in it. So here's our switch. We're gonna to have to make a hole for this to go in. You wanna make it just large enough to get this in there. So what I found in the past is to use a, a step bit like this. That way we can kind of increase the size a little bit at a time. We flip this over. I think I'm gonna go right here in this corner because it's not gonna affect you know our fuse diagram or anything like that. So with that said, I'll grab our bit and get this drilled out. Really kind of push our switch in like that. Now we can take it back over to the car and get it hooked up. So once you're holding your switch through, you want to make sure to take that ring nut and snug it up. With these, I usually just get them as tight as I can with my hand. Really no need to get a big wrench out and crank down on them by any means. From there, you're going to have two uh, set screws. You need to loosen these up enough to put the wire inside. Try not to take these all the way out because they're a little tricky to get back in and definitely hard to find if you drop them. Just set them up like that. Take the end of our wire. We're going to have a red one and a black one. Does not matter what color goes to which terminal. As long as you both have them, have them both hooked up. So we'll just push it through, hold them in place, and snug the screw down. What I like to do is just kind of bend the wire up a little bit too. Do the same thing with our other wire here. At this point that we have everything hooked up, we need to come back and install the included fuse. That way we can test it out and make sure it works properly. So to test our disconnect out, really simple. We'll just key our ignition forward. And right now you can see our dash lights up, screen lights up, can beep our horn. Everything works like it should. If we hit the disconnect button, you can see immediately we lose all power to the dash, to our screen, our horn don't beep or anything like that. So we know that it is functioning properly. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Roadmaster automatic battery disconnect switch on our 2018 Chevy Spark.